Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation, I am going to continue my series of videos on matrices and linear systems. Now we've been looking at linear systems and using matrix operations, row operations to discover the properties of solutions. We've been learning how to solve these linear systems through reducing the problem to a row echelon form. In this, in this presentation, I'm going to discuss an example where we're going to find out how the right-hand side of the problem influences its solvability. So let me uh, share my screen with you. All right, we're asked to solve the following problem for x1, x x2, and x3. Well, here's the interesting thing. This linear system may or may not have solutions, and it depends on the right hand side this the values of b1 b2 and b3 okay so for some values it'll it'll have solutions for some it won't so let, let's delve into this deeper and see what we can come up with now let's write this as an augmented matrix so we take the coefficients of x1 and write them as a vector, x2 write them as a vector, x3 write them as a vector and form a matrix. Okay, so 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, 2. And this sort of plays the role of an equal sign, I guess. And you don't know what b1 and b2 and b3 are. Okay, so they're just arbitrary at the moment. All right, what we're going to do is do uh, put this into a row echelon form okay now i have lots of videos talking about row echelon form and um, the row operations and the gaussian elimination so let's just review it one more time the first step is to choose a pivot pivot entry pivot element in this case we're happy because it, the, the it's, it's number one it's already up in the top left hand corner if you can't if it's not like that you can do some operations to make it there then what we want to do is look underneath that pivot entry and make everything below it equal to zero. We do that by row operations. So to make this zero, we would do row two equals row two minus two row one. To make this zero, we would do row three equals row three minus row one. So let's see where that takes us. Yeah? So let's do the actual operations. Now, if you know me, I make lots of mistakes here, so hopefully I don't make a mistake. So 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 times 2, so that's negative 1 minus um, 4. That's negative 5. B2 minus 2B1. Well, we don't know what B1 and B2 are, so we just got to leave it like that. Uh, row 3 minus row 1. So 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. 2 minus 2, 0. B3 minus B1. We don't know what those are, so that's the best we can do. Okay, so now the question is, well, okay, it's in a row echelon form. What can we conclude? Well, it first of all, solvability depends on whether or not this right-hand column is leading. Okay, you can see there's a zero here, a zero here, a zero here. If this is not zero, then that column contains the first or leftmost non-zero entry for the bottom row. That means this column's leading. And in that case, it says 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 equals something that's not zero. Clearly, that can't happen, right? So if this is not zero, then there are no solutions. If this is zero, then... Um, then column three is non-leading, and this isn't non-leading anymore. Uh, this, this isn't leading, this is non-leading. Um, and then that means that there's an infinite number of solutions. So let me just recap that. Okay, so, so this is in row echelon form now. So if B3 minus B1 equals zero, then the very right-hand column is leading. Okay, that means that 
basically it's saying trying to tell us that 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 equals something that's non-zero. And so the system has no solutions. What happens if this is zero? Uh, sorry, is uh, sorry. Sorry, if this is not zero, I forgot to put the not zero in. Okay. All right, if B3 minus B1 does equal zero, in other words, if B1 and B3 are the same, then uh, column three is not. So there's So C4 is no longer a leading column, and C, one, one of these left-hand columns is. So C3 is leading, and so there are infinite number of solutions. Okay. So here's an example for you now. Can this system ever have one and only one solution? If not, why not? Comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. See you later. Bye.